So what do you get when you make a pretty underwhelming and forgettable sequel? You make the best James Bond movie ever. Oh, and uh, remember, spoilers do lie ahead. Talk about a rebound. This is an example of what a good sequel should be. It really hits all the right notes. It makes up for everything Quantum of Solace did wrong and makes not only a good Bond film, but a good movie in general. It's the Bond movie we deserve and the one we've been waiting for. It's the Bond movie we deserve, but not the one we need right now. So we'll watch it. Okay, I was going to try to make that a Dark Knight speech, but um, it uh, didn't pan out the way I planned it to. So for the story for this movie, one of the big themes is that James Bond is aging. He's not as sharp as he used to be. You know, that's a really good that's a really good thing because there hasn't been as, you know, as good character development as I would have wanted in a lot of past James Bond movies, but these ones have really captured that. And all while that's going on, a former M16 agent is trying to take down M and the whole M16 organization. The characters in this movie are great. As always, again, Daniel Craig is great as James Bond. As he did in the previous movies, he brings such a sense of realism to James Bond in this movie that really it shows that in this line of work that it takes a toll on you. And that's something that they really didn't address in a lot of previous James Bond movies and that I love that they're addressing here. And really, one the one who steals the show is Judy Dench's M, who I don't think I've mentioned in a lot of my previous reviews, but she does an excellent job as M. The chemistry between her and James Bond is so well done, and it has a very mother-son feel to it. And then there's the villain of the movie. Oh, man. Um, we'll talk about him later. Um, for the bad things in this movie, I really don't have any gripes, to be honest. For the good things in this movie, first off, I love the cinematography and the overall look of the film. It has such a unique look to it. The music is also really good. You know, the Skyfall theme by Adele is just amazing. And really, all the music in the Daniel Craig James Bond movies have been great. The only one that I thought was pretty forgettable was uh, the Quantum of Solace scene. Um, just like that whole movie was pretty forgettable. But the one from Casino Royale, um, what's it called? You Know My Name and everything. And then this this one, Skyfall, has to be like the best though. And, you know, it's up there with like a lot of the other James Bo iconic James Bond themes like um, Thunderball and things like that and Goldeneye. I mean, I really, really like this theme for this movie. Um, the action in this movie, once again, is wonderfully shot and doesn't suffer from all that shaky cam. I'm not going to shake my camera because you know, I'll have to reset the shot and you know how lazy I am. But it doesn't suffer from all that shaky cam and everything like, you know, in, a lot, in the previous James Bond movie, which just felt like a bad Taken sequel. Um, oh, and the villain. Oh, man. <sighs> Javier Bardem, if you don't know who he is, he... Um, a previous movie that he played in was uh, No Country for Old Men, um, which he did an excellent job in that movie. I believe he got an Oscar for that movie. But he plays a villain called Raul Silva. This is the Bond villain I have been waiting for, not just in the Daniel Craig movies, in all of the James Bond movies. My biggest problem with all the Bond movies is that all the villains seem to be the same. And uh, while Barham's character kind of fits the James Bond checklist, you know, he has an interesting backstory. That's the thing that really just sets him apart, is that I really don't care about, you know, the the fact that he does that he does fit, like, you know, like, he's still got the suit, he's still, like, you know, he's got, uh, got his own island and everything, but I don't care about that because his backstory is so well done. He's a former agent, you know that M traded away and for going too far and you can tell that he went through some shit after you know he would after he got traded and he really reminds me of the Joker or something like that crazy but brilliant at the same time and you find out in this movie that he tried to crack a cyanide pill when he was captured instead of killing him it like ate away like half of his face and there's a scene in the movie where he pulls out his mouthpiece you know when he's talking to M and he says Look upon your work, mother. After he said that, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, huh, I kinda want you to win. But the villain, he's really the biggest reason why I like this movie, and I've always wondered why none of the other James Bond movies ever touched upon this concept of an M16 agent coming back for revenge. I mean, they've had to have screwed some people over that have had some, you know, 
discrepancies with M1 with M16. You know, they never address that of the idea of an agent coming back for revenge that they have screwed over. And they finally, you know, they did something new with this movie. Is why I think it was it's such a good movie. They've done something new with the James Bond concept, which was the reason why excuse me, Casino Royale was such a good movie. It was because they did something new with the concept. Another refreshing thing is that this guy isn't out to take over the world or some scheme to get richer. All he wants is M dead and M16 destroyed, which makes for such a better story and so much more interesting. I know some people complain that he doesn't show up until like an hour in, but honestly, it's not bad because they build him up so well throughout the movie with like, you know, the way he's hacking the computers and you don't ever see, you know, you're like, oh my god, like... Who is this guy? Who wants M and M16 destroyed this badly? You know, and it's not like in um, Attack of the Clones, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, where you don't meet Count Dooku, the main villain, until like 45 minutes in with like little to no build-up. They actually build him up, and the pacing is excellent. And when you first meet him in the movie, he, there's no like big reveal. He's just walking down a hall, like a long hallway, monologuing. Oh, man, he is good. He is definitely the best part of this movie. Overall, I love Skyfall. It's the best James Bond movie I've ever seen and probably the best spy movie I've ever seen. Craig is the best James Bond, in my opinion, and in this movie, it just solidifies it. The best part of this movie, though, is M and, of course, the villain. I give it an 8.9 out of 10. So that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.